spotted at Grand Central, bags in hand, Serena Vanderwoodson. Was it only a year ago our it girl mysteriously disappeared for, quote, boarding school? I know you may find this hard to believe, but not everyone wants to go to Yale because not everyone wants to be Blair Waldorf. Not everyone can be. And no matter how long you try to be good, you can't keep a bad girl down. Gossip Girl here, your one and only source into the scandalous life of the Manhattan elite. Hello my beautiful darlings, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having an amazing day today. Today is the day we're going to talk about Gossip Girl. We're going to analyze Blair Waldorf, which is my favorite character. I dressed like her today because she has the best style, she is the most entertaining in the show, but we're also going to analyze Serena van der Woodson because she's also an eight girl. And we're going to analyze their dark, light feminine energy, but also their wounded feminine energy. What are their powers? How do they use feminine energy at their advantage? How does Serena use her light feminine energy to enchant everyone? One, and how does Blair use her dark feminine energy to obtain whatever she wants? So if you want to know a full analyze of those two iconic, iconic characters and how do they do to be such it girls, mastering their feminine energy to the highest level, and keep on watching. But first, just wanted to let you know that if you want to see more of my content, I talk about fashion, femininity, old Hollywood glamour, movies, seduction, dating, and anything to make you become a highly feminine lady, to upgrade your confidence, and to upgrade your life, make you feel amazing. Feel free to join the channel, the link is down below, and also follow me on my Instagram and on TikTok. And also, if you want to join my Femme Fatale Siren course, the link is down below. It is a course about embracing that dark, sensual feminine energy, how to be that woman. In this course, you will be that type of woman that enter any room and possess the room, that any man would beg to be with them. Uh, how does Angelina Jolie, Monica Bellucci, Cleopatra, what do they do to be so magnetic, irresistible? It's because they understand what men want, they understand seduction, they understand their feminine energy and their feminine power. And you will truly embody all of that in that course so the link is down below if you want to join gossip girl this is one of my favorite show and i did a lot of videos about different show and different movies and i was like wait a minute i did not talk about gossip girl this is the best show i'm obsessed with the fashion when i started my youtube channel i even did some videos me <laughs> traveling to new york and wanting to see the spots of gossip girl that's how obsessed i was with gossip girl i think we were all obsessed with gossip girl and this is a show that is taking place in Manhattan and depicting the life of the elite. And these are showing their life, their stories, their drama, a lot of drama. We are going to talk about first about Blair Waldorf. Blair Waldorf is my favorite character. She's iconic, kind of sassy and mean, but that's why the show is so good. It's because of her and Chuck. They are the iconic couple. I love her relationship with Chuck. They love each other so much that it is so intense. And during the whole show, I was just watching Gossip Girl for them. I was just watching Gossip Girl also for the fashion. We have to admit, the fashion is fabulous. I love Lily Van Der Woodsen. She's so elegant. She's the she's the epitome of elegance this old money vibe there anything she wears is just fabulous you have also serena i like serena um, there are certain times where i don't like serena i have to say at the end of the show she becomes a little bit annoying but for most part of the show i really like serena i really love chuck i love nate nate is the men. Blair has the perfect balance of light and dark feminine energy, but we always have one energy which we are stronger in one and Blair is stronger in dark feminine energy obviously. So Blair has some light feminine and I love to see her light feminine energy. It's when you see her being a little bit childlike, her inner child come out. She can be very charming, very bubbly and also how she dress is very light feminine it's very light feminine energy and this is why she's such an interesting and intriguing character because she doesn't dress like her real personality her personality deep down is truly dark feminine femme fatale essence right but she doesn't dress like one 
at all. That's why I'm saying the femme fatale energy is an energy first and foremost. This is not just an appearance. You can be dressed like a femme fatale, but never have the true energy that is truly magnetic. She does dress like a preppy girl, a princess, innocent, cutesy, but behind all of that, her real personality is truly she is savage. So in the beginning of the show, I think that she was more in her light feminine. When she was with Nate, uh, you could see it. You could see that even she had some wounded feminine energy at the beginning. She could not really express herself and be truly her confident, savage, beautiful femme fatale energy. Her true self will come out later when she is with Chuck. I think Chuck let her have her real self come out and you can see it when she dances for Chuck. At some point she's doing the dance and it's really not her style. She's really this preppy girl that is in a private school that is so like proper and elegant and then boom, she met Chuck and she does that. And she's like, you think I can't do it? He's like, no, you won't do that. You're not that type of girl, right? You're not that type of girl to dance around and take off your clothes uh, in a club like this. And she's like, hmm, you really don't know me, don't you? And then she does it. I'm just saying, I have moves. Come on, you're 10 times hotter than any of those guys. I know what you're doing, Bass. You really don't think I'll go up there. I know you won't do that. And then that's when he's truly, his eyes are mesmerized by her daring to do it. And he fell in love with her at that moment, I'm sure. She dressed in a certain innocent, cutesy way that you wouldn't expect that. And so then poof, she surprises you with her dark feminine energy and her sensuality, which is a real power. She's full of surprises and men love that ladies they love the unpredictability they love surprises and adventures you would never get bored with someone like her just like the femme fatale does talking about the thing that always fascinated me about you yeah. the cool exterior the fire below she is so charming and so confident her confidence is truly there she can be manipulative that's the thing is that if you go to the dark feminine to the extreme you can be manipulative like a player, uh, even though that does a good, really good TV show. So on TV, it's excellent in real life, not so much. But in a way, she also protects herself by putting herself first, being a little selfish. You know, she's not afraid to do that. She's not afraid to be like, no, I'm that woman, I'm Blair Waldorf. Not everybody can be like me. I remember this scene, it was Serena, she said, well, you know, not everybody wants to be Blair Waldorf. And she said, well, not everyone can be. I know you may find this hard to believe, but not everyone wants to go to Yale because not everyone wants to be Blair Waldorf. Not everyone can be. That's the confidence. That's the femme fatale energy. We love that. That's high value here. She is sharp, intelligent, and quick-witted. She can really entice others and make others follow her by how magnetic and charming and iconic her presence is. Everyone is around her and everyone is following her. She's the queen bee. She's the queen of Constance. They follow her because they can feel her energy, her dark feminine power, I'm the queen. They don't even realize that they're being influenced, but everybody wants to be like her in that case. Your minions were just telling me about the search for the next queen. They don't get to choose the next queen, I do. And take off that hideous scarf, Penelope. You can see it from space. Her next power is sensuality. Blair possessed a lot of sensuality, and this is a big characteristic of her dark feminine energy. I think you would think that Serena has more sensuality and seduction in her, but I never thought that when I watched the show. I always thought that, yes, Serena is dressing in a more sexy and revealing way, that for sure. But Blair, her energy, her gaze, how she looks at Chuck, how she looks at men, how she is, she is a lot more sensual. She uh, possesses a lot more sensuality in her. You see that manifest a lot with Chuck, uh, her sultry gaze, her flirtatious banter, her sophisticated demeanor, how she walks with confidence how she is, how she teases. She is a big teaser. She teases Chuck to obtain whatever she wants from him, which is the most hilarious 
thing of the show and I told you when she joined Chuck in the club you can see her inner flame inner confidence comes out at first she's kind of repressed because of her mother her relationship with her mother that is not really the best Nate that it kind of it, that is kind of ignoring her and when she's with in the club with Chuck Chuck is looking at her like she is an absolute goddess she loves that her inner power got activated once she met Chuck and Chuck absolutely adores her and loves her because she is unapologetically herself her confidence is stronger than any other character in the show I think she is not afraid to be a little bold selfish and the masculine energy of Chuck crave this boldness she is in that case the only one that can have that playful nice gentle side of Chuck that nobody else can see she is the only one that can have that and that can activate that in him that can activate his light masculine because he's always in dark masculine always the bad boy always doing nonsense but with her he can be in his light masculine gentleman you can see him improving throughout the show because of the presence of Blair because when we're together you're all I think about and I would give up my empire for you I would give up everything for you another dark feminine quality of Blair is her ruthless ambition so in that case she uses her dark feminine to obtain whatever she wants and obtain all of her desires in fact if I'm somewhere and I can say Blair Waldorf would never do that guess what I'll do it. She can take risk and be sometimes morally ambiguous. That's the dark feminine here to the extreme. You can see also some good aspect of her. Her trying to be nice with Serena, very protective. Her trying to always want to protect Chuck also. And this is actually her next quality. It is her protectiveness. She's so protective towards the people that she loves. She would really go into great length to defend her loved ones and her family. We're sisters. <laughs> You're my family, what is you is me. There's nothing that you could ever say to make me let go. Showing a deep loyalty and commitment to the people that she cares about. I will stand by you through anything. Why would you do that? Because I love you. Super intelligent. She can plot the end of your career, she can plot the end of your marriage, she can do anything she's so strategic so intelligent and so smart it does give her a big advantage in the social scene of new york and of the upper east side when everyone is a bit of a snake everyone is a bit of like talking behind each other's back she does have also a lot of self-preservation she preserves herself as i said she puts herself first it is a competitive and cut environment that is the Upper East Side so she is right to guard herself against threat and you can see that she is protecting herself a lot more than Serena Serena is way too much I'm going to talk about her afterwards but she's way too much in her light feminine which can lead to being very vulnerable to anybody also Blair does have some wounded feminine energy at some point especially in the beginning she does evolve and get better throughout the show she does evolve and resolve her wounds and her traumas but at the beginning she does have some wounded feminine energy some fear of rejection that's why she needs to control she needs to manipulate she needs to scheme people it is in that case a fear of abandonment and rejection she is terrified to lose the people that she cares about and she will do anything to maintain their loyalty and affection and she then have to create an environment where people cannot abandon her like her dad did her dad did abandon her and went away when she was younger so she created create an environment where she controls the people around her, her minions, so that she cannot be abandoned again. You can't make people love you, but you can make them fear you. So she does have an abandonment from her father and a complicated relationship with her mother that is very critical and not really supportive of her daughter. My mom has never met a single one of my teachers. She regularly forgets my birthday and she only comments on my appearance when she has something to criticize. So she does grow and evolve throughout the show. Also, uh, throughout the show, she's also jealous and threatened by Serena a lot. Why would I try to steal something from you that I pushed you to do? Because you take everything from me! Nate, my mom, Blair. you can't even help it! It's who you are! When you truly embody in your divine feminine energy, it is not in our nature to be threatened by other women. 
It is not in our nature to be jealous. We are supposed to be like sisters. Okay, and I think at the end, she understands that. Throughout the show, she's struggling with her feelings of inadequacy and jealousy. And I think afterwards, she becomes truly confident and embodied. Once she understands that having that feminine connection with Serena is actually a plus in her life. This is really truly what brings her happiness, to be connected with her like a sisterhood. And Serena is always with her by her side. Serena never let go of Blair. She, she's always there for her. So this is like truly important to have healthy relationship with other women. It can heal your wounded feminine energy. And it did that for Blair. Her style, her style is so iconic. This is my favorite style of any TV show, I think. One of my favorite, at least. I love also the style of Gabrielle Solis in Desperate Housewife. I did a full video about her in case you want to see, I will link it below. It is described as classic sophisticated. It really represents her Upper East Side upbringing. She has tailored silhouette. She loves blazer dresses, tailored pencil skirt. She loves bold color and prints. I remember this beautiful coat that she had in the season three or at the end of season two I believe it was this green amazing coat and she mixed it with yellow and gold in her hair she is not afraid to have bold colors and mixing colors all together she wears a lot of prints also a lot of polka dots a lot of rich colors like red emerald blue she's adding always some feminine details such as ruffles bows floral print which add a lot of romance to her outfit a lot of romantic light feminine romance right and her iconic signature which are her headbands which can be any color any textures i love the fact that she is having a signature look like this it adds so much sophistication and so much cuteness to an outfit she does wear a lot of luxurious fabrics she invests in luxury pieces and refinement statement jewelry jewelry that you can see chunky necklaces like i'm wearing right now i'm wearing a big necklace she doesn't hesitate to be bold in whatever she wears. And I noticed also Lily van der Woodson is doing that a lot. She has a lot of beautiful tailored coats. Her coats are iconic. She's living in New York City where it's cold. So, so she needs a lot of beautiful tailored coats. And this is by seeing all of her coats that I fell in love with fashion and with coats and with dresses. Um, I truly fell in love with fashion watching Gossip Girl. It adds so much sophistication to your ensemble. I think anybody needs a coat. Even me, I still have my coats even living in Dubai. Trust me, I'm not getting rid of them. The hair of Blair are just very well done. A lot of curls, bold, big curls. Uh, the makeup is very natural, very simple. Uh, maybe you can let me know which character you love, which character you hate in the comments. I do not like Dan. Dan was okay in the beginning, but afterwards he became such a villain. I really do not like Vanessa, okay? Nobody likes Vanessa. Now that we did a deep analyze of Blair Waldorf, let's do one about Serena. Serena is so charming. She has so much charisma. She is the it girl. She is the girl that everybody's looking at because she's embracing her light feminine and her light feminine brings a lot of charisma to her. So a lot of people think it's just because of her physical appearance, but it's not just because of that. It is also because of her energy. Her light feminine qualities, she has a radiant presence. Serena's presence lights up any room she enters. She's very natural in her way of being, like she's not overdoing it. Even her way of talking is very effortless. She's like, um, I have to go. She is smiling, making people feel special. That's the light feminine, right? She has compassion and empathy. That's another quality that she has. She has a genuine warmth and kindness in her. Shows a lot of empathy towards the ones in need. There to support friends and family. As I said previously, always there for Blair. Always there when she needs her. Always there for her brother. At the first episode, you see that she wants to take out her brother of this hospital. 
she is feeling empathy for him she doesn't want him to be trapped in this place she has a lot of authenticity and vulnerability she remains authentic and true to herself she shares her struggle with the people that she trusts she creates deeper connection with others she is very optimistic she's so positive she has resilience also she maintains an optimistic outlook in life which is so magnetic everyone wants to be around positive people everyone wants to be around someone that is smiling that is charming that is effortlessly positive like this because you want that energy for you as well she's angelic and magnetic her voice is sweet angelic anyway i'll wait outside for you would it be cheesy of me to say for however long it takes and she has that lucky girl syndrome that everything is gonna work out for her. You would think that it's just because she is super wealthy and from this very powerful and wealthy family. But Blair is also from a wealthy family. All of them are from wealthy families, apart from Dan and Jenny. They don't all have this lucky girl syndrome, everything is gonna work out for me attitude. Serena has that and it's it's always working out for her you see it and a lot of people are jealous of that she attracts anything to her just because she is that girl she <laughs> is the lucky girl that everything is working out for her she doesn't worry too much she has this effortless feeling about life that Serena has also some wounded feminine energy unfortunately in her having strong light feminine energy it can have disadvantage. It can make people take advantage of you. Her wounded feminine energy manifest in her relationships. Serena pick always an available man. Her love life is chaotic compared to uh, Blair. Blair is quite consistent. She loves Chuck, okay? She dated Nate at the beginning, then it's Chuck, then she dated, I think, someone else or something, but it's pretty consistent. Oh yes, she dated the prince. But Serena had so many men like why did she have so many men around her it's almost like she could not be single and this is a bad thing if you cannot be alone if you cannot be single and enjoy your time being single then this is a sign that you are in your wounded feminine energy you're seeking validation too much from men so in that case serena is trying to mimic her trauma that happened with her dad her dad did leave her also when she was younger, so she's trying to attract the attention of her dad. I don't know which season, she wanted to be photographed so much by everyone so that she would appear on paper to attract the attention of her dad. She was looking for validation from men because in reality, deep down, she's looking for the validation of her dad. This is where her wounded feminine comes from and her insecurities and her lack of self-worth come from this is why she's going into destructive behavior partying drinking taking drugs and also jumping from men to men and not being selective because you have to be selective ladies with men that's why i preferred a little bit blair because i i really recognize myself in her in that aspect she's a lot more selective she loves herself too much to be like no you're not worthy of me <laughs> No, not every man is worthy of me. And Serena did not understand her value. She, you could see she's gorgeous, but she really did not understand her value in that case. She often question her worth and have imposter syndrome. Serena does also have a fear of abandonment just like Blair does. She craves stability and security in her relationship. That is why in the beginning she chose Dan, because Dan was secure dan was fully in love with her mesmerized by her so she felt secure with him right she felt like oh he's not gonna abandon me he's going to give me all of the attention that i desire actually all of the attention that i'm craving from that my father she's dating dan because she feels like he's going to be devoted to her i'm really happy to be here with you right now Nobody's ever looked at me the way you just did. At the end, we discover that Dan is not really what he appears. So I think she deserves better. She deserves Nate. Nate is cute. Nate is really giving you love and attention and devotion, but he's healthy. He's healthy masculine. He's more in his light masculine, but he's so amazing. Serena seeks external validation a lot a lot partying drinking going in other countries it was kind of a call for help 
from her family. It was like, notice me. But her mother was present, but not so present either. All you care about when people look at me is what they think of you. Her style, so the style of Serena is more like bohemian chic, flowy silhouette, where you have Blair that have very tailored structure silhouette. Serena is flowy, effortless silhouettes, which exude a sense of ease and freedom. She mixed a lot of different textures in her outfit, silk, chiffon, lace, and even denim, which you never see denim on Blair, but Serena is very much more casual, effortless, bohemian style, and she contrasts textures to add more dimension to her looks. She has a neutral color palette compared to Blair. Blair is very colorful, bold colors, a rainbow, but Serena is very neutral. She occasionally has some bold colors, but it's very rare. She wears a lot of creams, beige, white, bohemian prints also, like florals, tie-dye. She is the queen of layering, and it translates a cohesive, creative outfit. It's just very beautiful. She is able to layer pieces in a way that is super fashionable. Not everybody can do that. It reflects a stylish ensemble. She often layers lightweight cardigans, jackets, oversized sunglasses, big hats, a lot of fringe, fringe handbag, chunky jewelry, earthy tones, like this Coachella vibe a little bit. She has an effortless hair and makeup, as I said. Her hair are always wavy, but it's like she's waking up in the morning and just leave it like that. She doesn't look like she puts a lot of effort in her hair, even though I think she does because she has amazing hair. She has this kind of casual glam. She's still glam, but it's effortless, it's casual. She can pair back, for example, something very casual with something very luxurious and glamour. For example, she would pair denim jeans with a top that is a silk top, very luxurious and beautiful. Or she would wear a beautiful dress with a pair of boots. She creates always this balance of comfort and sophistication. Thank you so much for watching my beautiful darlings. I hope you liked it and I hope it was really helpful for you, this video about Gossip Girl. I think this is truly an iconic show. I could not wait to do this video for you. I think this is a deep analyze of those both iconic characters and why they're so iconic and also their struggles. And I love the show. I want to rewatch it again now. <laughs> and I know this show by heart. I have all the DVDs. I'm not joking when I said I was obsessed. Let me know which characters are your favorite in the show. Also follow me on my Instagram and on TikTok. And don't forget to subscribe down below. Don't forget to join my Femme Fatale Siren course. The link is down below and I'm giving you a lot of beautiful kisses, my darlings. You know you love me. XO, XO, Gossip Girl.